Welcome back everybody to another episode from Ampro Engineering. Today we are going to fix this tiny oven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry, 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 wrong channel. Okay, okay, now we're, now we're ready to go. Welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode, we are going to look at a car very similar to one that I reviewed earlier, the Nico Turbo Panther. In my previous review, I mentioned that I felt the Nico Turbo Panther is one of the greatest RC cars of all time. And this is not me saying that it's the greatest toy grade RC car, mainly because I believe that toy grade RC cars are all RC cars, regardless of how many world championships your RC car has won or how many miles above the land speed record your RC car has broken, I don't care. They are all toy cars. I view this car as the pinnacle of the affordable RC cars from the golden age of RC in the mid 1980s. Unlike my other Turbo Panther, this is the remote. Let's take a look at how I did it. I'll begin by removing the body the body on the Turbo Panther is held on by very few screws. You have one in the front, this central one here, and you have two more here at the rear. It's very important to note that the front one that I took out initially is incredibly delicate in terms of this area here on the body. They're very prone to breakage. So if you have one that uh, looks to be in pretty good shape, I, I wouldn't count your chickens before they're hatched because it's very likely that this you know, looks perfectly intact until you remove the body and discover that it actually is fractured. It's very common. So we will remove the body and normally you would find a PCB here. Here we can compare the two, the vehicle on the left of course being completely stock and the vehicle on the right having modernized electronics. And it is a testament to the world we live in when you can see that all of the electronics fit in a fraction of the space that the originals did. Now the original PCB is, doesn't really have any microprocessors. The original PCB is nothing more than resistors, capacitors. Um, there are a couple of chips, there's a chip right here I'm not an electrical engineer, so unfortunately I really can't dive into the details of the PCB. I really wish I could, but what I can say is that this is a two-speed board. It will allow the car to go in a low speed and a high speed. The factory power switch was here at the rear, and I was quite adamant that I made the new power switch look exactly like the original. Now the power switch that this speed control came with is much, much smaller. In fact, we can see it right there. I made an adapter for it, so it fits in this snug location here. More importantly, this switch at the top, this big knob, I actually printed one and I pushed it over the tiny little switch that this thing had originally. So it does have that factory appearance. The car on the right, uh, you saw the body here. The body is, is practically new. The car was not operational, so I did not feel bad disassembling it. Uh, in fact, when I did try to get the car running, there was no life whatsoever. It seemed that the PCB was fried as it was getting power. Therefore, I didn't feel too bad in gutting the car and putting on the modern electronics. However, I was adamant about not cutting anything. This proved to be pretty simple for this area over here. All this stuff fit nicely. However, when it came to the servo, that proved to be a little bit harder. Let's pull off the servo area on the right buggy. There are three screws here, one, two, and three. I have removed them, and this area will come straight off. We see that we have an electromagnet right there, so when power is applied, it will make the wheels either go full left or full right, if, assuming, of course, you don't dislodge it here. On the vehicle on the right, we can see that all of that has been pulled from the car, and we have placed a small servo. What I did to place the servo is 3D printed a pad for it to sit on, so it's, its orientation is about as good as possible. Obviously, you can see that the servo horn itself is not centered. It's pretty close, but it's not in the center. I also cut off one of the wings on the servo. The pad I created for the servo was then stuck to the chassis, and I placed this on top of the pad with double-sided tape. So all of it's taped in basically. Modern double-sided tape, I used 3M VHB. That stuff is absolutely amazing and it's not gonna come off easily at all. I then created this little 
dome here. It's hard to see. There is a small ball stud here that sits inside this little dome. And as we go back and forth, and I'll power this up in a moment, it turns the steering. I think now is as good a time as any to put some power to this car. When it came down to putting the batteries in the car, I did not want to use a LiPo or kind of gut this area over here and put in some kind of modern uh, tiny little battery, which I very well could have done. I decided, you know, what the heck, I want to put some double A's in here and I'm going to use the factory battery compartment. However, this is a 9.6 volt car, but the ESC I'm using is not capable of running any more than 7.2 to 7.4 volts. Therefore, I did not use these two batteries in the wiring. I basically omitted them and I did that by running the power wire from here to the negative wire directly beneath it, thusly excluding the outer two batteries. Let's go ahead and turn the radio on and we'll turn the car on. Okay, car is on. Right, left. One of the things you'll notice is like, okay, well the car's not steering very much. And yeah, you're right. Mechanically speaking, it can't. The uh, the knuckles have bump stops on the arms as well as on the little metal knuckle. And yes, that is in fact a cast aluminum knuckle, which is quite remarkable. This limits the car's steering throw. Therefore, I, I really can't do too much about increasing the amount of throw and thusly decreasing the turning radius. As you can see with the original version here, if we try and crank it all the way, that is, that's maximum. With that said, you think it'd be hard to turn, but the car does have a differential and it makes it quite easy for the car to make pretty tight turns. So even on this two foot long cutting board here, I can very easily drive the car forward just a tad and back. Something, of course, that was just impossible originally. I'll tell you this, that when I got the car fully operational and took it for a spin, I, I didn't think I was going to be too happy with it. And it was quite to the contrary. This car, I mean, it, it, was, it was always a fun car to drive originally. But now it is manageable. It is controllable. I can drive it with one hand, which means I, I usually drive kind of like this, which is not possible with the two stick radio. I think at this point we want to see how the car runs. All right, so we have the Turbo Panther that is running 2.4 gigahertz receiver, regular hobby grade servo and ESC. Let's take a look and see how it drives. Let's turn it on. You can hear, there we go. Nice and proportional. Let's take a first spin. I think the first thing you should note is that the car is capable of going this kind of distance here simply because it is now 2.4 gigahertz. Although in terms of in terms of operation, the car really is the same car and there's a car coming. You would think that even though the car is mechanically the same, it would be the same car to drive as the standard one, but because of the throttle response, most importantly, the fact that I can steer, I'll do it right now here, without a throttle being applied is, is quite different. You're trying to keep it Bushes and accelerate now. And go to the right. And then the street and turn around. I hope you enjoyed that running video of this car. I have to say that 
its performance is quite impressive. Again, for its size, this is, this is a very tiny car. It's under one foot long. So, you know, for what you're getting out of it, I think the car is more than adequate. The question, of course, is should you do this? And that's a difficult question. You have to ask yourself, have I made the car better? And the answer is no. The car, part of its charm was how it was before. The fact that it had only low and high gear, uh, as well as only a low and high speed or slow and turbo, because that kind of takes you back to how the car was when you first had it, when you only ran the car. I mean, honestly, who cares if this thing was or wasn't digital proportional? because no eight-year-old is going to drive this car in any speed other than full throttle. That honestly makes no difference. Should you do it? Well, there's a number of reasons why you should. In the case with this car here, it was broken. I, again, am not an electrical engineer and was incapable of modifying that PCB, so I decided this would be an excellent candidate to convert into a more modern electronic RC car. I am quite happy with it, but if this is a path that you want to go down with your beloved childhood RC car, I would recommend against it, mainly because the car did lose part of what made it amazing, and that's why I didn't do this to my original one, my red one, because that car was perfect as it is. This one here, again, it was broken, so why the heck not? Another downside of modifying these RC cars is usually people want to put in the fastest possible motor you can cram into it, which means they're going to put in a, a who knows, a, a strap a rocket booster to the back of it. The downside to that, of course, is these cars are not capable of that kind of abuse. First off, we have no ball bearings, so let's just see how this front tire spins. Okay, that's actually spinning a lot better than I thought. Dang it. Okay, never mind. Anyway, you can't put bearings in these cars, and the fact that this thing is riding on a pin on its rim means that over time, especially at high speeds, you're going to get a lot of friction, and you are going to eventually destroy the wheel, as well as the gearbox, because again, if you're going to put a super hot motor in this car, the, the car is not designed for that. More importantly, let's say you crash it and you destroy an A-arm. Well, these aren't cars that they ever sold parts for, so you're going to have to purchase an entire parts car to keep your original one running. Therefore, overall, my recommendation for one of these upgraded cars is they're a great option for repairing a vehicle that is otherwise broken. But keep in mind that more power to that motor or even replacing this motor with a more powerful one is going to require a little bit of restraint as it's very likely that the car can be destroyed and this car is already 30 years old it's not getting any younger and it's not getting any cheaper well folks i hope you enjoyed another input here in the buyer's guide this is a little bit of a different buyer's guide where i guess we talked a little more about buying the car and then modifying it there's a couple others that i do plan on doing this too in fact let's take a look at this little guy's big brother and i do apologize i have yet to have bathed it this is man it's a lot bigger isn't it the car on the right is a sears lobo they applied the name lobo to a number of their vehicles this sears lobo is in fact a nico bison the car on the left was called the turbo panther aka bison jr hence the fact that they are effectively identical in their cosmetic appearance you can even find these in white with the exact same paint scheme this car is a future project in fact it may too get upgraded electronics i am trying to salvage them so we'll see if we can get this big guy working in the meantime i do have a package coming in from shapeways and i can't wait to put on some of these upgraded parts i hope that i have filled the time nicely in between getting some uh, some new projects rolling i hope you've enjoyed these videos we've got a lot more of them to come as well as a ton of upgraded videos Thank you so much for watching. Before you take off, please go ahead and check me out on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me on both of them at Ampro Engineering. And please take a look at the band Blue Pinto. They are the ones that allow me to use their music in all of my videos. And a link to their webpage 
is in the closing credits, as well as a link to the Shapeway store. There are a number of parts available for this car, including the bumper, as well as the auxiliary lamps, and soon to come out is going to be a replacement wing. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.